Please help me in welcoming our personal brand and business coach, Sigute Zinekai. Abundance, what a way to start off 2023, right? Kind of nice we got pushed into January from December. So let me take us down a, a bit of a memory path for my summers. Uh, when I used to, my mom used to send us back to Lithuania for two months every summer, which is amazing, right? That's where I'm from. And uh, we'd spend those two summers with my grandparents. And this was way back when, before social media, before we had texting. And so to stay in touch with my friends, of course, for those two months, I have to know what every 13-year-old friend of mine is doing. We stayed in touch with email, right? And so we'd get into my grandparents' car and they'd drive us downtown. We'd go to an internet cafe, we'd pay for our 30 minutes, and we'd email our friends. And then finally one year, my grandparents got the internet at their house, which was amazing. And there's, there's one memory I have of, you know, drafting my, my email, hitting send, and looking over, and my grandmother just was sitting there with this look of wonder in her eyes. Right? My grandfather was the techie. My God, he WhatsApps me, you know, every week, and... He's like, we need a computer, we need the internet. But my grandmother was a little bit resistant to that. You know, she didn't want to really step into that world too much. And she was just going, oh my God, I can't believe my granddaughter is writing a letter and it's just magically going into the air and sending over to Canada and landing in her friend's inbox, right? I was like 12 years old. I didn't know how to explain the internet, <laughs> right? It's like electricity. We know it's running all around us. You know, we see the lights. We see proof, this is working up here. If we wanted to plug our phone in, we'd be able to tap into it. But we don't really need to explain it or understand it to know that we can use it. And so we're kind of living in this era, I wanna say, of these magical sort of airy things floating around that have immense power in our lives. And it's not always you know, having to explain it or understand it or have the perfect definition of it. Sometimes it's about just being able to tap into it. Right? And one of those currents that we're all here to talk about, which is Creative Morning's theme, abundance. Right? I want to talk about how do we tap into that abundance. So that's the talk today. It's becoming magnetic. And through my own life journey, which we'll get into through the clients that I work with, I've sort of taken the liberty to kind of turn becoming abundant into three principles that I want to go through, which is embracing your multi-passion itself, building strong boundaries, and attracting unlimited opportunities. I find when we cycle through these, we can really become magnetic. And so let's kick it off. So I have to say, embracing my multi-passionate self, giving myself that label, was probably the biggest game changer I could do for myself. Right? I've always had ambition growing up. I've always had a drive. Right? Sometimes that's a blessing. Sometimes that's a curse. But I've always wanted kind of more, a bigger life. But at the same time, I always had a little bit of shame, right? I didn't have that one thing that everyone tells you you have to do, that one thing you're amazing at. When you're five years old, you decided you were going to be great at it. And I thought, does that make me not successful? Does that mean my ambition is wasted on me? Right? I always had that little bit of shame. And if you look at a lot of common advice, right, that's what it tells us. Traditional success is often measured by the amount of life we're willing to sacrifice. Now listen, I love Gary Vee, I'm not hating on him, but I also don't want to live a life where I'm like hustling my face off in my parents' basement, eating ramen, and you know, eyeballs glued to the laptop, cutting everything out, right? Cut your friends, cut your family, screw them, cut creativity, cut everything. It's not the life I want. And I think we've all done it a little bit, right? Like we go to school, we get those good grades, we, you know, maybe you push creativity to the side, we get a real degree. I did that. You know, you get into your job. And my definition expanded, it changed. My definition of success is now how expansive I can make my life, right? It's funny, when we pursue money or these traditional things, we end up being a bit smaller, right? Oh my God, if I do this little thing, it's gonna take away time from my hustle, and we just become smaller, smaller. We don't pursue these new curiosities, these reinventions. And so I want to start to be more expansive, build that kind of life. So my definition has changed. So as you can imagine, I only lasted in my first traditional corporate job for about three years. My lovely office here, pretty pimped out, I would say. 
And everyone was really proud of me, right? Oh my god, I was like 22 out of university, friends were jealous, like girl's got a permanent job, she's making 60k, she's getting a 10% raise every year. Okay, you know, a couple months in and I'm thinking, this is great, but am I supposed to do this for 50 years? Just this? If I don't love it right now, why would I love it 30 years from now? And I started thinking, like, am I just, is this it? Is this where ambition took me? I'm just going to relive my year every year over and over again? Thankfully, Mr. Robin Sharma came in some article or who knows where. And I saw this quote, don't live the same year 75 times and call it a life. And I mean, my boyfriend teases me this. I could tattoo it on my forehead. I'm always saying, is, am I just reliving this life over and over again, right? How can I make each year a little bit different? Something, like, can I start something this year? Can I make a new friend? What can I do to make each year better? Or not even better, just different. And so, one of the first pivots that I made with the permission from Robin Sharma was I moved across the world to Malaysia to join a company called Mind Valley. I didn't really know where Malaysia was on the map. Of course I Googled it. But I moved there, and I'm sure a lot of people thought I was crazy, right? I didn't have that applause and that recognition of like, what is she doing now? And then, after a couple years there, I moved back. Moved back to Shopify, woo, back to Ottawa. So now this finance girl has gone into online marketing and spirituality, has now gone into tech. What is she doing? I love this quote. I don't want to get to the end of my life and find that I lived just the length of it. I want to have lived the width of it as well. And I found that with all these pivots and reinventions to my life, my worldview started to expand, right? I got all these new opportunities, all these different people that I was meeting. It's like, oh, everyone's living a life so different. Why don't I incorporate that into my own life? And I realized at that point that being multi-passionate is a superpower. And so with that belief, I've made it my life's work. And if I can snapshot my career at this time, this is what I do, my personal brand and business coach. And it really lights me up to work with professionals who are moving into the online world, who are kind of reclaiming that authority in themselves of what do they want their career to be, right? Not just being an employee, not just following the trends, but how do they want to steer it? And then, of course, also as my creative outlet um, and a beautiful community I've built is the Friday newsletter, which I'd love for you to join if you want. Uh, it's this kind of stuff that I talk about in there every Friday when I sit down. And through the exercises that I do with my clients, I thought today, each of those three principles, maybe we can do a little bit of a, a practice. And you don't need to you know, journal or anything, but you could just close your eyes and start thinking and giving yourself permission to Start mapping out your desires, right? If we want a multi-passionate life, we have to have multiple passions, and right? And for something to become a passion, we have to sort of start somewhere, and the seed of it is those little desires, those little hunches, right? And we follow them, and maybe they turn into something, maybe they don't. I just want to take some time, start thinking about what experiences do you want to have? Let's think this year, let's think five years, 10 years, anything. Maybe you want to visit the Cherry blossoms in Japan. That's always been a big one for me. What other ex experiences do you want to have? Maybe you want to have lunch with someone. Someone you admire. Someone you're maybe too nervous to reach out to. How do you want to grow? Right? I'm up here speaking. That's definitely a goal of mine. Speak more. Right? Maybe you want to start writing. Maybe you want to start a podcast. How do you want to push yourself into that you know, as Max said, you still get those little jitters. How do you want to push yourself? That's a great sign to have. How do you want to contribute? What about to your friends? To your family? What legacy do you want to leave? Right? And this isn't some Tony Robbins legacy. This is maybe hosting a friends gathering once a week. <coughs> think about these, right? And maybe, maybe think about one or two that you can hold on to for the presentation today. What are these desires that you can carry through? And then what small action can you take today? So for me, one of my big desires was to be an author, to be a writer, right? But everybody here with a perfectionist brain, of course, you can relate. I was like, well, to be a writer, I need a book deal, so I can't write, right? But a, a book deal does not make a writer. Writing makes a writer. And so I got, you know, bored of my shit, basically. And I decided, all right, what can I do that's easy? I have a LinkedIn account, let me write. 
once a week on LinkedIn. Just a paragraph, a couple sentences, whatever I felt like that week. And I committed to it for six months, and I was writing it. And I was working at Shopify at the time, right? Obviously, fear of who are these techies going to think I am, talking about abundance and you know, branding and all these things. And then I would get into meetings. We'd wrap up the meetings. And people would be like, oh my god, I love what you wrote. I was listening to this podcast. You should listen to it. Mm, cool. Or like, I'm reading this book, right? You know, all these Brene Brown, Simon Sinek, Adam Grant, people I love. And I started realizing, oh my god, I know, like, there's so many people here I've known for years, and I didn't know that we could connect at this level. This is amazing. So I thought, okay, let's, let's turn these LinkedIn posts into a newsletter. Spoiler alert, Friday newsletter, right? To kind of be more intentional with it, right? If I commit to every Friday, I'm going to have this thing, I'm paying for an email provider, right? It's getting a bit serious. So I did that for another six months. Again, once a week. And then after six months there, I started having replies of, hey, do you do coaching maybe? Could you help me? I would love to write. I would love to build an online business. And so I just want to share, sometimes our perfectionist brain is like, no, wait for the book deal. But in a year from just writing on LinkedIn, a year later, not only do I have this creative outlet that I'm so incredibly proud of, but I have a new career stream, right? I left Shopify at that time because I was able to. And now I'm building this career that is kind of fueled by me, not fueled by you know, how a reorg happens and shifts my role. Been there. <laughs> OK, so principle number two, building strong boundaries. This one's a fun one. If we're building a multi-passionate life, guess what's going to happen? Lots of things are going to come our way, right? And you got to put some boundaries down. We're used to in this traditional world, right? The boundaries are set for us. You're, you're working nine to five. You're going to have weekends off. Here's your job description. Here's your job role. Here's what you're doing. We've kind of gone away with not really needing to learn boundaries. Uh, and so I want to share three boundaries, at least, that I like to, to always kind of keep in mind that I'm, that I'm taking care of. And the first one is boundaries with people. And this isn't pushing people away, right? This is actually speaking up, having hard conversations, making intentional friends. So I have this one boundary in my business where every Friday I don't take client calls, I don't do client work. This is my creativity day, and I've labeled this. But at the start, you know, a few years ago, when I had just started my business, I remember getting an email from a client who was like, hey, I'd love to have a weekly check-in. How about Friday at noon? And of course, I look at it and go, how dare they? How dare they? And I march downstairs. My boyfriend's having breakfast on the counter. And I was like, you will not believe they're trying to ruin Creativity Friday. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to think of a logical reason to be able to say no to them. So I'm like, OK, maybe I'm going to start hiking, which means I'll have to be out of the house every day Friday at noon. I'm like, no, no, I don't want to do that. It's winter. I'm not hiking. <laughs> So I'm like, maybe I can, I don't know, sign up for some sort of training or course that I'm out of the house. And, you know, bless him. It's like, what if you just emailed them and said you're not available? I was like, must be nice not to be a people pleaser. Good for you. Thank you. Go upstairs, send an email. Five minutes later, the reply is, oh my god, so sorry. How's Thursday? And it's this reminder, like, was I really about to sabotage an entire goal of mine to write every Friday? Right? How much do we do that? When a desire is new, it's imaginary. Right? It was an empty block on my Friday. But was it? And it's just time to honor those, those imaginary or what feels like imaginary desires that we create for ourselves. So boundaries are, you know, start with N. Boundaries with consumption. Again, if you're starting a new desire, if you're starting a new business, you don't have all those boundaries set in place of when you're working, how you're working. If you're starting something new, where do we go? Google, Instagram, give me information, teach me what to do. And then you're just kind of overwhelmed with all the information that's out there. So it's up to us to kind of put up those guardrails. So something that I'd like to share that I do is, you know, for each sort of area of my life, I pick one or two people that I follow, right? I look, do their values align with mine? How they're living their life? Is that the kind of life I want? And then I, I sort of cut them off and I just listen. OK, these two people I'm going to listen to marketing advice for. These two for health. These two for whatever else. Just to avoid that sort of need to take on more, 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 as if we don't know already. And boundaries with our thoughts. Ha, we thought boundaries were for the you know, screwed up outside world. 
No, also your own thoughts as well. And I have this rule that the first thought that always comes up, I'm gonna put a boundary against it. That's not my thought. That's a me being scared thought. And I'm gonna create a new thought, a second one. Right, so any of those desires that you have. First thought is probably, I'm not very good. I shouldn't do this. I suck, right? Replace it. And so I want to start the second part of this exercise, which is look back to that one or two desires that we wrote down and start thinking about right away what thoughts are coming up for you when you see it. Immediately, what's that limitation? I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm not ready. Who's not going to like it? Who's going to say something? Write those thoughts down. There's so much power in kind of reading this statement, and you're like, did a five-year-old write this fear? Like, are, am I really afraid to leave the house or write an article because someone will be mean? That's okay. There's a five-year-old inside of you. But just choose another thought. Give them something else to think. And none of these, like, Pinterest, Instagram-worthy, you know, I'm a boss babe unicorn and I'll crush it. You don't have to go there. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want. You can just go somewhere a little one step higher. Just There's a lot of average writers out there. I'm average. Why can't I write? Right? There's a lot of average business owners out there. It doesn't make them less amazing. And attracting unlimited opportunities. So this one is like where the, where the flowers blossom, right? We've done all the work. This is where we're attracting all these amazing opportunities. And the thing is, we live in a relationship-based society. So opportunity, money, right? It doesn't fall from the sky. It travels through people, right? Think about jobs that you had, opportunities that you've had. It's always come through someone you know. And so this quote that we all know, your network is your net worth, very well known. Makes sense, right? What does your network look like? You give into it. It gives back into you. And there's two ways that we sometimes block that flow of opportunities, right? The first one is a fear of change. We've all been here, right? We create this little bubble. We don't want to let anything else in just because we feel safe in it. And so we have the same job our whole life. We have the same friends our whole life. We have the same hobbies that we do, the same trips we go on. And it's almost like this, this pool of opportunities that's just circling in there. And we block that flow. And the second one is fake illusion of success. So now it's like, okay, I'm better than this circle. I'm going to expand out. But then we're, we don't really know what we want. So we're like, okay, well, this person has a lot of followers, so they seem cool. Maybe I'll be friends with them. Okay. Everyone's going to Tulum, so maybe I'll go to Tulum, which I really want to go to Tulum, manifesting. <laughs> right? All these things that, okay, this feels safe if I wear this and I dress like that and I talk like that. But then once again, you're, just, you're not getting opportunities that are aligned to you. And so we might find ourselves in this life that feels a little bit mediocre. We're like, oh, it's not really me. It's not a reflection of me. And to escape mediocrity, you have to invent your own identity in the world. And this right here is what personal branding is to me. This is why I'm so passionate about it, why I love it. It's being intentional about who you are, right? Today, we can decide that, you know what? I don't drink coffee. I don't care if I've drank it for three years. Today, I don't drink it. That's a whole new you that you can just like that with a snap change. And since all these opportunities are coming through people, now that you have the desire that we did in the first practice, right? you have the boundaries now to stop you from resisting it, I want you to start thinking, who are these people that maybe want these desires like me? Right? Start nurturing the community of soul people around you. What conversations are they having? Think about what conversations you're having, right? When I started sharing my article and realizing, oh my God, all these people at Shopify like the same things that I like, I just never had an opportunity to talk to them about it because I didn't know and they didn't know, right? Think about how do they live their life? What does success look like for them? Really think about it. And we're all in this room. We're all creatives. We're all in Ottawa. We're all aligned. We're all excited for abundance, right? This is a great community to be part of. It's a great one to chit chat with. Practice our dance moves afterwards. Your life is not measured, pardon me. Your life is not meant to be explained, it's meant to be experienced. 
right? Kind of what I was talking about at the end. I don't need to explain the internet. I can connect to Wi-Fi. I don't need to explain electricity. I can just plug in. And with abundance, you don't have to, or your life, you don't have to explain everything to make it make sense. And this is just a fair warning. If you want a life that's reinventing, just be prepared to not be able to put yourself in a perfect label so that your you know, family can describe what you do and explain to you. That's okay. You don't need to be explained. Just experience your life. You can know if you like it. Which is why becoming magnetic is such an important topic, I feel, so we can plug into it into abundance, right? Into the life we want, into all the opportunities that we crave, kind of not being shy about the things that we want and actually proclaiming them. And it's a lifelong process. So these three principles that I share, right? These are things that I'm constantly rotating through. Am I giving myself permission to pursue my desires? Am I? Am I building strong boundaries to support, to support my desires? Have you been? Have things creeped up, maybe? Am I nurturing a community of soul people to unlock the flow of opportunities? Am I you know, reaching out for those coffee dates? Am I reaching out to the people I admire online? And just cycling through over and over again, maybe you want to set a quarterly you know, calendar invite to just do a little gut check. OK, what's something new I could try? Oh, Diana Vreeland, you have my heart. There's only one very good life, and that's the life you know you want, and you make it yourself. And if we're doing this right, every single one of us should, in theory, have a very, very unique looking life, right? A unique combination of, of hobbies, of our career. It can reinvent itself over the years. Maybe we have the same hobby now. In five years, we'll have different hobbies, right? That doesn't mean that doesn't get lonely because you're the only one going down this path. You're like, I just have my own intuition to trust. Great. That's not fun. Come join me if you want. Find communities. Maybe not this one. Maybe find another one where we talk about this, right? Because you kind of, I find for me, I need like a weekly dose and even just me writing this and you can have your own practice. Just me showing up every week writing about this. I'm like, that's right. I'm still here. I'm still doing it. I'm still doing something that's a little bit, you know, I don't know where it's going, but I trust that it's going somewhere. And let's connect on the gram. Let's connect today after this presentation and connect with everyone around you. Um, a request, I would love for you to send me uh, your desires. I'm always, I think when we talk to each other, we learn what's someone else thinking that maybe I could be inspired by. Right? Today, if there's a time for a little bit of murmuring and chatting, turn over to the person beside you. And instead of, hey, what do you do? Maybe we can ask, hey, what's your biggest desire? And just start that flow of opportunities around us. So let's stay abundant, Ottawa. Thank you so much. All the best for 2023, and thank you. Oh, that's a good one. Um, I have, so two of my biggest desires right now is to start spending every summer in Europe, like I did in my childhood, shocker. The older we get, the more we become like our, our younger selves. So that's a goal that I'm working towards, right? And that sort of leads to a lot of, uh, you know, ways that my career needs to look, my business needs to look, how do I support that? Uh, and so one of my, gosh, dare I say it out loud, one of my business goals actually is to start a sort of group membership online course, which is taking me away from a one-to-one -one kind of relationship that I'm very comfortable in, very happy in, and it's going one-to-many, right? Inviting, starting maybe a group of 10, maybe a group of 20, and just creating that container of women professionals who are ambitious and who want to step into the online world and start creating a uh, consulting business, a coaching business. So thank you, I'm setting that intention. <laughs> Now I'm accountable. 2023. That's right. <laughs> Hold me accountable. Just DM me every month. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was wondering how you stay organized or set goals and achieve them in a timely way with executing them when you're running your own show. That's a great question. I mean, I think in a past life I was very like 
kind of robotic about it, right? Like my life was simpler at the time. You know, when you're kind of like living at home and you're whatever, you can kind of do these things. I feel like where I'm at right now in my life, there's just so many things going on in my brain. I think we can all relate to that, right? There's no sort of like every day at 8 a.m. I'm going to do this. And so it has been a, a huge sort of pivot into that. And one thing that I really love is having your kind of your A goal and your B goal. And just, so I'm going to use an example of my dear friend Sophie here, right? We started a gym routine, a fitness routine a couple months ago. And we have this like perfect, like, okay, every Monday and Thursday we're going to the gym. And then we can also do Tuesday if we want to add that in. We could also do yoga. But if we steer off a week, we're like, okay, we're going back to yoga, right? Just once a week. And just having that, like, when I'm feeling perfect and everything is aligned in my life, this is what I'm going to do. Three workouts a week. And then it's like, okay, and then when shit happens, when the holidays happen, when I have family visiting, that's not going to happen. So I'm going to do it, you know, once a week. I'm going to go downstairs to the Peloton and do a little workout. And just kind of acknowledging that life is not perfect and it's not linear and you're probably traveling a lot and things are happening. Um, so just having those two levels, I find that's really helpful because then it takes away the shame of, Great, I failed again. I'll just start again in like six months. Um, so I would do that. And second of all, just, I love a good calendar. Like set it in there. Don't even think about it. Do it early in the morning. It's such clear advice. But I think the biggest thing is that shame, right? And, and allowing yourself to push the timeline out. So if you, and don't be afraid of that, right? Like I have so many goals where I'm like, okay, in six months I'm gonna do this. And then I hit six months. And I'm like, oh, I need four more months. That's okay. Like, who's the goal police to tell me that I failed, right? The end result is I did the result, right? Not the timeline. So, yeah, thank you for that. Thank you very much. I enjoyed your talk very much. And it's really uh, jogged some questions in my mind. My question is, um, do you have any particular rituals that you do on a daily basis that really feed um, your life in general, but I guess in particular? Creativity and your well-being. Mm -hmm. Okay, so two come to mind. One is, so part of my business, of course, is like the, in the creative side and the branding. The other side, I work as a project manager and I work with a lot of uh, thought leaders to to build their brands. Right, so it's very, very like brainy, intellectual versus like the creative side. And for that, I really have to block my days off. So like Monday to Wednesday, I'm fully like there's no creativity coming out of me whether that works for other people or not, but I'm really kind of doing that brainy work in Asana, in Excel spreadsheets, right? And then Fridays where, like I said, I have that boundary. I don't do any sort of brainy work. I'm just in the flow and kind of seeing how my mood shifts, what I want to create. So that's one. The other one is how I start the morning. And again, I'm, I'm not religious to making it, you know, for 10 years I've been meditating for 10 minutes a day. Like, allow yourself to shift that. And so I can share recently, I purchased this amazing book uh, with Jamie Beck. It's, she's a photographer, she's amazing. And it's like, I don't know, 100 pages. Like, it's one of those coffee table books. And so my current uh, routine is make a cup of tea, read that book for not more than 10 minutes. But she talks about Provence and living in France. And it just calms my energy so much because I found that I used to wake up and like cortisol, get to work, right? You're working so hard. And just the whole day, I'm like feeling behind. What can I do more? And that energy, I was like, damn, we need to get rid of that. <laughs> so when I start the morning, I almost have a rule of I don't start work until I've like tamed that energy. You know, there's no rush. There's no deadline. No one's going to die. And so for me, tea and reading the book does that. And then I can get to work and kind of approach my work with a, a clear mind. So even you know, 10, 15 minutes, something in the morning to put you in the mindset, right? Or if you're doing something crazy, then put on comedy, put on loud music, get yourself pumped up. But it's, it's almost like being intentional, like your personality is not the one you woke up with, right? You can kind of cultivate it with reading or books or, or whatnot. Hope that helps. I can relate to what you were saying about questioning yourself, having a lot of different interests and passions. And I'm curious about the transition from seeing it as uh, a defect or a failing or a shortcoming to embracing it as a strength. Because mm. of course, when you say it in retrospect, it sounds so easy to be like, oh, you know, it's a, it's a superpower. But I'm curious what that transition actually looked like for you. It took a long time. Mm. You know, what, what that looked like. 
Yeah, I mean, think about it this way, right? Any thought that was replayed in our brain for 30 years, you're not gonna squash it overnight. And so it's almost like this weaning off period. I think for like two or three years, I've now been like, no, 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 we're multi-passionate, we're doing this. I still will have, let's say, 10 minutes every week where a thought is like, oh my God, like, you know, panic, panic, maybe I should do this, oh my God, no. And then you, it's almost like I start the day being like, I'm gonna get shit done. And then you kind of catch yourself and you pull yourself out. That's okay, and I always tell myself, yeah, this is, you know, it's like, I'm sure it's like anything, any kind of addiction you have or any, you're trying to lose weight, right? 10 years later, you're st you still have that seed in there and that's, it's nothing. It's almost like a nice little reminder of how far I've gotten. Um, but in terms of what helps me, it's really surrounding myself with other people who live their life. Um, I have a lot of amazing people. I mean, Lana, Lana's amazing. She's a multi-passionate. Kind of being in her bubble has definitely been, you know, a reassurance of that. I have a lot of other clients as well who are very multi-passionate, very successful, right? I look at their life and yeah, they're, they're making seven figures. That's aspirational. They take their weekends off to hang out with their kids. Yeah, that aligns with my values. Um, they're, they're doing talks, they're traveling, they're writing books, and then they're also building these like amazing brainy businesses that, that I'm inspired by. So it's, it's finding a few of those people, right? Building that community where you're not constantly around people who are like, go, 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 working 20 hours a day. You know, I need my designer so I can prove that it's worth it. And I love designer too, so I'm not hating on it. But, but yeah, find some people that can relate to you. To be honest, but I remember reading something from you that stuck with me, which was about <laughs> how fitting for this event that uh, the people that say that they're not morning people, mm. this idea of like, oh, I can't come with you in the mornings, I'm not a morning person. Like, I don't function before X mm. o'clock in the morning. Um, funny enough, I kind of consider myself not really to be a morning person, mostly because I'm just really grumpy and not that much fun, and then also really hard to get out of bed. My partner put witness to that. Um, so I like I liked how you sort of deconstructed that a little bit of like it's an idea you put in your head. Can you speak to it a little bit of how we kind of set these labels for ourselves that are I mean the answer question? Right? Yeah. No, 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 that's really good, no. And it, it kind of goes back to that second principle I was talking about of creating these boundaries, right? I mean I mean, if you really get rid of any boundary, you're just like this floating blob in the earth and you're like, I don't even know what to do. Like, should I have breakfast at 11 p.m.? Like, what's going on? And so we create these little boundaries just to kind of give us a little bit of structure of like, who the hell are we humans on this like planet, right? And we put these structures in and sometimes they're helpful and sometimes they're not helpful. And it's almost like this regular audit of what kind of life do I want and are the boundaries that I've put in place, are they supporting that? Right, and maybe for a long time not being a morning person served you. That's fine, right? And maybe you're like, well, I also want to be part of Creative Mornings and come here, so what, which one do I want? Do I want to hold on to that identity? Is that important to me for some reason? Or do I want to go to Creative Mornings and be the person who does that? And it's kind of looking at that choice and knowing that I can switch that. The question is, do I want to switch that? And having a good enough reason to switch it. Because like, there's nothing wrong with not being a morning person. But is it blocking you from, from what you want to achieve? So I love that you remember that. Thank you. Thanks so much, Craig. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you again. <laughs> Merci.